Hello YouTube, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Hypermaster N520 produced by Coolmaster. And yes, I'm going to do a review, not just an unboxing. We're going to be using my Antec 900 case with my gaming PC in it. It's using an Asus 990FX Sabertooth motherboard with a FX4100 bulldozer processor on it. And let's see how it fits in. I hear that the installation's a little hard. I don't believe it, but... Uh, I'm going to be doing two settings on it. I'm going to go ahead and do just stock settings, so everything enabled, including the power saving options and all that. So we're just going to do a comparison of the stock settings. And then I'm going to go ahead and overclock it to 4.4, where it sits around 4. Point, or no, 44 degrees Celsius as an idle, and it reaches around 55 under heavy load or you know video games and I'm not going to use anything like well I can if I wanted to I'll use Prime 95 but I'll also do something more realistic like putting StarCraft on max settings and showing you realistic heats that this computer will hit not many video games will hit a hundred percent CPU usage for a prolonged time. So right now I'm just putting the using the UEFI, setting the cool and quiet, and then setting all the energy saving options like it would have stock. Alright, we're gonna save those changes and restart. And while that's going on, let's see what you actually get inside the box. All right, all right. So here are the components that come with the Cooler Master Hyper N520. Of course, the heatsink, the brackets, and a little bit of a thermal paste, and of course, the instructions, which I hear are next to useless. But we'll see how the installation process goes. And you see, the computer idles around 38 degrees Celsius. We'll screenshot that for you. And the fans are spinning, or well, the CPU fan is spinning around 20 or 2K. And this is actually my RAM cooler, it's spinning at 2K as well. The rest of the chassis fans are spinning at 1,200 RPMs, and the fan you're hearing right now from the computer is the CPU fan. So it's the loudest fan on the computer. And let's go ahead and do a benchmark real quick. I'll go ahead and show you what temperatures we're reaching while we're in-game. Just a quick size comparison of the old... AMD heatsink that uh, came with the computer, or came out of the computer, I guess I should say, and then the N520, yes. As you can see here, our temperature is idling at about 40 degrees Celsius on the stock settings, and it's on high performance mode, which is what I'm assuming most people are going to be putting their computer on if they have a gaming PC and they're looking at this CPU or heatsink and the fan is running around uh, 2142 rpms and of course it's just on stock settings on every single aspect and let's go ahead and play a game and see all right so we've been running starcraft 2 for a little bit and what it seems is it's sitting around 48 degrees celsius under load and of course it's uh, actually overclocking itself a little bit since uh, turbo clock is enabled on it but the decibels is actually what I'm looking at the idle of the computer is sitting around 22 and we're looking at the decibel for the idle which is 24 and under load it's 42 or 42 decibel which is quite loud that's the fan that you can hear in the background at the moment but let's go ahead and swap out the program we're using and try using Prime95 and see how hot it gets. Alright, so after a 10 minute burn it's reached a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius and it's dropping rapidly but it is um, using that undervolting because uh, the turbo technology is enabled on it actually undervolts even when it's on high performance mode. It's using uh, what is it? Windows base settings. So what we're going to go ahead and do is restart and, 
And on the overclocked, we're going to perform the same test for the Prime 95. We'll skip over the StarCraft 2 and uh, see how it does. All right. And then we'll compare it to the N520 as the last item. All right. Before we even start using the Prime 95 on the overclock setting, this is still on the stock CPU heatsink. It's sitting at a higher idle temperature. It's at 46 degrees Celsius. It is a slight overclock. It's 4.2, so it's not a torture on this test, but let's go ahead and see what temperatures it hits. All right, so I've already hit 65 degrees, and that's my warning for my computer. It's actually at 66 degrees now, and it's actually starting to throttle back. You'll see this go back and forward from 4.2 to a little bit lower, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the test. That wasn't even the full um, 10 minutes that we had at the stock settings. So let's see what our uh, N520 can do. All right, so with the new heatsink installed, the idle temperature for stock, everything is 34 degrees. And uh, the idle temp is actually, what, six degrees cooler than the stock heatsink. All right, after a 10 minute burn, it seems the temperature is only rose to 45 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go ahead and stop all the workers and then overclock it back to 4.2 and run the same test. And uh, the last time it hit 65 degrees Celsius quite fast. And let's see if it will be able to keep up with the Prime 95 and keep it cool. It's done a good job so far. All right, so under overclock settings, it's sitting at about a idle temperature of 37, 38 degrees centigrade. And we're going to go ahead and do a Prime 95 10 minute bench and see if it keeps the temperatures below what it was before, which was 65 degrees with the stock cooler. It's uh, shown really brightly so far. And let's see if it can keep up and uh, impress us even more. All right, after a 10 minute Prime 95, it's hit 51 degrees centigrade, and let's go ahead and stop that real quick, and that's uh, quite impressive, considering the last time we ran this at 4.2, it didn't even make it to 4 minutes before it hit 65 degrees centigrade. So it's doing its job well, and I'll give it a, a raving review. It did a very good job, especially for the price that it's set at. It's, uh, it does it at a good price, so it's not a bad heatsink at all. And uh, that was my boxing and, or unbox. All right, that was my unboxing and review of the Cooler Master N520. It's a good purchase. It does what it does and at a good price. All right, thanks for watching. Just for kicks and grins, uh, let's do a full one gigahertz overclock. So with the stock core voltage, it's a little altered. And we did a front side bus or HTT overclock and now it's in that 4.6 gigahertz and let's see how it does. Alright after a 10 minute Prime 95 at a 1 gigahertz overclock it's sitting at 54 degrees centigrade and it seems to have uh, topped out there. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the test real quick. And uh, let's see how fast it cools down from 53. Or 54. It's already at 50 so or 51. Cauterize the area. Centuries of asteroid impacts have scattered mineral fragments and crystallized Vespine all over the wreck. All right, we'll scout around and see what we can pick up. Will do. Acknowledged. Add-on complete. Add-on. SCV ready. I can't build. Alright, so final thoughts about the Cooler Master N520. It's a great heatsink 
for the price. It does what it's supposed to do. It cools down the CPU and it's far superior to the stock CPU cooler. So go ahead and purchase it. It's a great purchase. And I'm actually keeping my computer at 4.6 GHz stable at 33 centigrade. So thank you for watching.